My mission upon this channel is to provide details regarding ancient ruins, artifacts, and technologies that clearly demonstrate that there once existed lost, ancient, advanced civilizations that have been lost here upon our planet. My unwavering research dynamic is that said subject matter is crucially factual. Thus, it is always based upon that which I have personally sought to confirm as undeniable realities before sharing. I do not only offer an intellectual armory for you, the viewer, who is often confronted with many academic fallacies, but particularly the younger viewer, enabling their empowerment to correct academics, often ordered to pass on such fallacies through a permitted curriculum. As such, I feel that it is crucial that not only are the facts I share established proofs, but that features which they explain away as others work are established as beyond doubt as currently unexplainable, as such undeniable as the work of others. Exposing academia's lies due to our ancestors' limitations, ancestors often claimed as the constructors of said ruins found throughout the world. Due to this bestowed responsibility to only convey historical accuracies, established mystery, and ancestral limitations. Many independent researchers often privately contact me via my secure armored email, often sharing not only their own controversial research, sometimes including their own expedition details, but also academics in positions of tremendous public influence, who not only share my view that much of the history currently being taught to future generations is not only inaccurate, but is based upon a conspiracy of concealing past civilizations. One such email received recently pertained to something known as the moon shaft. However, although this is not the main theme of this particular video, I will briefly cover what has been shared with me, and after further research, endeavor to do a detailed video in the future regarding said explorations if enough evidence of its existence can be established. Sent to me by Mike Collins, a member of an unsuccessful expedition to try to rediscover this mysterious lair. A brief prologue is as follows, quote, Three soldiers hiding from the Germans in the Tatra Mountains in Slovakia discovered a lair which could possibly be the oldest man-made structure in the world. The structure is believed to be between 300 and 310 million years old by a number of individuals, with Heinrich Himmler even sending several scientific expeditions into the Tatra Mountains looking for the shaft, with members of the KGB also attempting to obtain the diary writings on the experience from these deceased soldiers. End quote. Although compelling, I am reluctant to cover this story yet due to a lack of any physical evidence, regardless of the considerable lengthy testimonies that pertain to its existence, I intend to invest some time in researching it further myself first. However, tonight's subject originates far away from the supposed moon shaft in China. Ancient star maps of such accuracy and range that due to currently attested academic understandings of the history they simply should not have possessed such knowledge, let alone been able to accurately illustrate it upon parchment, known as the Dunhua star chart. The chart is the first accurate graphical representation of star locations within ancient Chinese astronomy, and it is of nearly every star across the atlas. According to modern academia, it is dated to the Tang Dynasty between 618 and 907. Although I feel this is actually a copy of charts of a far earlier age, and thus of a far earlier, far more capable civilization. Before this map, much of the star information mentioned in historical Chinese texts was drastically inaccurate. However, this map provides a graphically precise verification of star observations and are part of a series of charts all known as the Dunhua manuscripts. It seems, however, in an attempt to quell the curiosity of the astute among us, considerable funding has been funneled into constructing an excuse for its existence. This funded project is known as the International Dunhua Project, with much of the research and indeed exclusive access to the maps solely granted to these academics, which I believe is an attempt to convolute their importance. However, regardless of these tremendous efforts, 
there are many features of the map which remain unexplainable. Compelling evidence of them being Chinese copies of knowledge left over by a past, vastly more advanced civilization. Copies of elusive manuscripts that at some point within Chinese antiquity were most probably found preserved somewhere. First, the Dunhua star map is to date the world's oldest complete preserved star atlas. Meaning that before the ancient Chinese were even a seafaring civilization, they somehow had access to knowledge of the accurately plotted star charts of both hemispheres. Additionally, the main image, which many presume is the entire Dunhua star chart, an insinuation implied by Wikipedia, is only a small fraction of the collection. Yet this piece in itself is an exact, accurate plotting of polar constellations. And due to these ancient Chinese people being incapable of such tremendous voyages, not only does the advanced knowledge copied down upon these charts strongly support my posit of them being a rediscovered, copied relic of a past civilization's knowledge. These copies were found in the early 1900s in a walled-up cave containing a cache of manuscripts. They were discovered by Chinese Taoist Wang Yuan Lu in a cave system known as the Mo Zhuao Caves. Although the scroll with the star chart was found amongst those documents by Oral Stein when he visited and examined the content of the cave in 1907. One of the first public mentionings of the script in Western studies was from Joseph Needham's 1959 version of the book Science and Civilization in China. Since that time, however, only a few publications have conveniently been devoted to the map, nearly all being Chinese publications. This map, or as we postulate, accurate copy, was made around the year 700. I feel their lack of public exposure and my reasoning for asserting that they were copies of a far more advanced civilization's work is not only due to the Chinese civilization's inability to travel to such locations to plot such charts at the time, but that the whole set of star maps contains over 1,300 stars. Not only proving that, although the Chinese are academically claimed to have believed the world was flat at the time, the star charts prove beyond doubt that they had knowledge of constellations from around the globe. The academic explanation for this is that although the Chinese supposedly presumed the world was flat, they somehow assumed that the heavens were somehow spherical, which to me just seems like a desperate attempt to discredit such manuscripts' true origins. I believe, due to the in-depth and accurate knowledge copied upon the star charts, much of which were far out of the reach of this ancient civilization's observational capabilities, be clear proof that they had discovered maps left by a civilization that was not only seafaring but global. Also, due to the chart featured on Wikipedia, had successfully explored the poles and accurately mapped its constellations. How did the ancient Chinese have such in-depth knowledge of so many constellations, especially polar constellations? We find such manuscripts, academia's funneling of considerable funding into the discrediting of their inexplicable nature and their lack of exposure as highly compelling. The Royal Kurgan – undoubtedly an astonishing, highly unusual ancient structure. One of many such structures found within the local area, yet the Royal Kurgan the most impressive by far. Found within eastern Crimea, this incredible building, predictably, like many other miraculous, possibly pre-cataclysmic as yet unexplained ruins, which we so often cover on our channel, not only possesses features strongly indicative of a culture far predating the current academically attested constructors, but this impressive structure, like the many of the other structural relics found throughout the world, is claimed as a mere tomb. We hypothesize this is due to their inexplicable nature, revered by our more recent ancestors, and as such, selected burial locations for rulers of these more modern, well-studied residents of the area. With the Royal Kurgan being no exception. According to academic study, it was apparently created with the sole purpose of being that of a tomb, constructed for the ruler of the Bosphoran Kingdom within the 5th century BC. We postulate, however, 
that these structures were merely reused as tombs, subsequently becoming locations of worship for these once powerful individuals. Our claim that the Kurgan far predates these technologically challenged, academically claimed cultures is also strongly supported by architectural evidence found elsewhere on Earth, sharing unmistakable, compelling characteristics with other well-known ancient structures we have previously covered, which we postulated, due to the great antiquity of the structures, were undoubtedly surviving relics of a now-lost pre-Diluvian civilization. It is unquestionably an enigmatic structure, with its most unusual and also recognizable feature being the mysterious, almost unique shape of its stonework. However, most intriguingly, this uniquely shaped stonework is a feature also found within the fortress of Nimrod, located upon the southern slopes of Mount Hermon, located an impressive 1,300 miles away. We find the chances of this extremely unusual type of masonry being made and subsequently used on these separate structures a mere coincidence highly unlikely. It is far more likely, regardless of the extreme distance between the structures, that they were, in fact, built by the same people, a group of highly capable constructors currently ignored by academia. We find it to be a far more likely logical hypothesis that this mysterious group built the Royal Kurgan for an as yet unexplained purpose using stone-shaping methods unique to them. Furthermore, as covered previously, just like Nimrod Fortress, located by New Earth Channel, there is yet another ruin built with these same easily identifiable blocks, found within the oldest foundations of the ancient ruins of Jerash in Jordan. This lost civilization's unique finish to their stonework, incorporated into each build, fortunately makes connecting these builds to the same constructors seemingly undeniable. And due to the fact that the Fortress of Nimrod and Jerash alike feature this stonework at foundation level, officially recognized as the oldest portions of both sites, we can logically presume that the Royal Kurgan not only shares the same constructor, but also likely shares the same tremendous antiquity. What's more, due to the sheer size of some of the stones utilized within Nimrod, indicates that it is existing work, created using lost knowledge, thus built by a lost civilization. Who built the Royal Kurgan within eastern Crimea? The surviving foundation at Jerash in Jordan? Or indeed, the original structure found at Nimrod's castle? Were these structures built by the same, once highly capable, highly advanced ancient civilization? If not, why do they share such an unusual, unique style of stonework? What was the Royal Kurgan built for? When was it built? We find its enigmatic shape, construction technique, and indeed, seemingly identical stone characteristics linking it to the other ruins of tremendous antiquity, each located thousands of miles apart. Highly compelling. Due to the rigidity of academic opinion regarding the history of man, many sites are stubbornly attributed to civilizations that were simply incapable of their construction. Mausoleums, temples, and other structures found all over the world, often carved straight out of the bedrock with such artistic vision and accuracy, they rival even the artistic masterpieces created during the Renaissance. Temples such as the Kalesh, among many others found within India alone, that were somehow carved straight out of rock hillsides with stunning precision. Such astonishing feats of ancient stonework that to claim they were created by the currently academically attested cultures, we feel is absurd. Not only are many of these ancient, unexplainable structures built with the utilization of seemingly impossibly huge megalithic blocks, but they also display masonry techniques and refined stone carving that we believe the only logical explanation for their origins is that of a once highly capable, technologically advanced civilization's workmanship. 
For example, our recent research surrounding the Basda cave system, the confirmed quarry for the nearby ancient ruins of Haran, with a focus on the stone cutting tool marks found within, and indeed, the easily identifiable shape of the blocks built from this undertaking, we perceive as a possible missing link now connecting a vast number of ancient ruins around the world. Due to it being confirmed as the quarry for Haran, and the unique shape of the stones used in the construction of the site, we have been able to link this signature style of block cutting to many other sites around the globe. With the astonishing ancient rock-cut structures found at the site known as Myra, now also identified as one of these sites, predictably claimed as tombs by academia. And although there is no substantiated written reference for Myra existing before it was listed as a member of the Lycian League in 168 BC, the stonework still existing at the site, thanks to ours and New Earth's efforts, could be seen as that of the same as many other ancient sites, also possessing these signature blocks found at Hassan, which we strongly feel, due to a large amount of evidence, as having a pre-Diluvian origin. These identifiable features most notably found within the theater of Myra, and although the flooring has been robbed out, which we presume was once polygonal, just like that of the flooring found still existing at the ancient amphitheater of Delphi. Additionally, the precision with which these pertained tombs were cut into the sheer cliff face is to us clear evidence of a civilization's work far more capable than that of the academically claimed builders, the Iron Age Lycians or even the Greeks. We suspect, like the many other incredibly built ancient sites around the world, this site was merely re-inhabited by later civilizations, utilized and indeed claimed as their work. Not only due to an absence of documentation of their existence prior to this habitation, making academia's claim to their creators an easy assertion to make, but also due to the perceived illusionary capabilities that these monuments would have lent to the Greeks and prior to them the Lycians' architectural skills. There are two necropolis of these rock-cut temple fronts found at Myra, the first being the river necropolis and the second being the ocean necropolis. The best-known tomb in the river necropolis is the lion's tomb, also called the painted tomb. This name given to the tomb by traveler Charles Fellows, who in 1840 found the tomb to have still been colorfully painted in red, yellow, and blue. Lycia is known to history since the records of ancient Egypt and the Hittite Empire in the Late Bronze Age. It was populated by speakers of the Luwian language group. Written records began to be inscribed in stone in the Lycian language after Lycia's involuntary incorporation into the Acumenid Empire during the Iron Age, with ancient sources indicating that an even older name for the region was Alope. How can academics continue to claim that such precisely cut stone structures were the work of such primitive cultures? We believe it to be far more logical to presume that these precision cut structures were already in existence during these eras, and probably the reason for the area's initial inhabitation. Who built the ancient rock cut structures of Myra? Were they, as we postulate, created by the same advanced lost civilization we have linked through the stonework to sites the world over? It is undoubtedly an incredible location, with particular identifiable features, which we find highly compelling. We have in the past covered the astonishing discovery solely made by Dr. Sam Osmanagat within Bosnia, long thought to have merely been a hill, completely overgrown and neglected with many locals even building upon and farming its inclines. Dr. Osmanagat, however, after studying the geology of the area, realized the reason for precise angles of this supposed natural formation, eventually confirming that it was indeed an enormous ancient pyramid. One that, after long, arduous research, has been found to rival even those of Giza Indeed, even its plateau, especially if one takes into consideration the following expose. 
Regardless of constant mockery, objections, resistance, and dismissal he has predictably experienced from mainstream funded academia, Dr. Osmanagat has not only unearthed vast portions of this ancient structure, proving beyond doubt that it was indeed an ancient pyramid, but has also successfully penetrated its inner sanctum, along with many other highly intriguing ancient sites located within the local vicinity. All littered with stones that seemingly give off resonance frequencies that are not only being ignored by mainstream scientists, but baffling all those who valiantly decide to explore their features. Yet, thanks to Jock and Sam's continued efforts, our understandings of the incomprehensible, astonishingly true scale of this site has increased dramatically, and indeed the feat that whoever built it went through in constructing the site, truly unbelievable. Jock spent 16 months as official videographer for the Archaeological Park Foundation, a Bosnian NGO non-profit organization created by Dr. Sam Osmanagat, during which, and thanks to the considerable effort of hundreds of volunteers who since 2010 have been involved in the backbreaking excavations of the site, clearing many tons of rock and earth from the area, including the Ravni tunnels, such tunnels are apparently widely known locally for their healing powers, which upon investigation, many alternative investigators have recorded unusual bioelectromagnetic energy levels within. Yet, Jock and Sam's most recent personal discoveries is the connection of these tunnels, located a fair distance from the pyramid itself, interwoven with all the local ancient sites a result clearly intended by the past intelligence responsible for their creation. These tunnels backfilled 4,600 years ago, for reasons that many have postulated was done to avoid further degeneration of the original civilization's work. Thus, we're clearly a conservation effort that, just like I have postulated on several other videos, are the purpose for the casing stones which can still be found upon the Great Pyramids, were done by groups who clearly revered these sites. Furthermore, regardless of this connection of tunnels, Jock and Samir have also realized, thanks to these contributory excavation efforts, something truly astonishing regarding not only the Bosnian Pyramid, but the entire surrounding area, which, just like the pyramid, were long presumed to have been merely a natural geological landscape. However, all of the curious sites that have been found dotting the surrounding area were not only undeniably man-made, but that the entire landscape was actually once carved out by hand or possibly machine. With the river Fonica, which runs through the entire site, masterfully designed to permanently remain placid, also man-made, and due to the fossilized stonework found, enabling this water's manipulation, according to Jock, indicates it could have possibly been completed millions instead of thousands of years ago, successfully creating a river which gently meanders through the site. Who built the Bosnian Plateau? Who had such tremendous earth-moving and water manipulation capabilities? seemingly many hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of years ago. As the investigations within the area continue, it is slowly growing into one of the most enormous, most compelling areas of evidence of ancient advanced lost civilization to be found anywhere on Earth. Thank you very much to Jock for bringing all this astonishing information to light furthering all of our understandings of their past capabilities. And as the research grows, so does the compounding proof of these past, highly capable civilizations. We will, of course, keep you posted through our connections, a place that is undoubtedly highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you.